All right, name's Yardfish, and this is not really how I saw myself using this YouTube channel. My big plan for my first long form video was supposed to be something about an infamous movie director or some shit like that. Problem is, I ended up running into something on YouTube that kind of gave me them heebie jeebies. Not a whole lot of people were really talking about it, despite the fact that they should be. I'm referring to the abuse and exploitation of animals on YouTube for commercial purposes. As there's a group of YouTubers primarily from Southeast Asian countries, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, but most prominently Cambodia, that have gone out there and gotten their hands on animals, specifically monkeys, even more specifically baby monkeys, the younger the better in fact. And then they subject these creatures daily to a variety of abuse that falls into the physical, psychological, and unfortunately sexual category as well, in service to a demand that's being provided by what is honestly one of the most unhinged communities I've ever come across on the Clarenet, a community that I first heard about a couple of years ago from an expo video where he showcased a group of individuals who evidently really hated baby monkeys for whatever reason. Thing about it, back then these videos were mostly made out of uh, nature documentaries and the like, as well as those exposed videos that were meant to highlight the appalling conditions these animals lived in at labs. Yeah, the videos that would show up in these playlists back then were just compilations that were cut together to basically highlight the juiciest bits of monkey suffering, I suppose. Back then, I, as well as many people, just sort of dismiss this as some sort of odd trolling op. Mostly run by, you know, a bunch of edgy 10 year olds looking for some of that attention that mommy and daddy deprived them of. That was obviously a mistake as this community has continued to nestle in the ass crack of YouTube growing nice and fat. And following the events of the pandemic quarantine, a lot of people were stuck at home and bored with not a whole lot to do. And... I guess they found something that really tickled their fancy. And as a result, a lot of these people from these various Southeast Asian countries that I mentioned before decided that they were going to provide for that demand. And as a result, there was an explosion of video channels run by people who just happened to find these little monkeys that were abandoned or rescued from dangerous, horrible situations that they then decided to keep in their house and film daily. Uploading their videos at a truly absurd rate, they would drop like 6 to 10 videos a day. In less than 2 weeks, some of these channels would already be rocking like 117 videos, providing a lot of fuel for their appreciative audience to tickle their bum crack to. Now, speaking about that audience, my initial assumption, as well as I think most people who might see this shit, is to assume that, um, you know, there are a bunch of teenage edgelords, like I originally said. Uh, but after digging around in this cesspool for about a month or so, I can say with relative confidence that the majority of these people, roughly 3 out of every 5 subscribers if I'd have to give you a rough estimate, yeah, they're a woman over the age of 30, with quite a few of them, Falling into that middle age category with a bunch of them being straight up grannies. <laughs> Can you imagine that shit though? Like you're a child, right? 10 years old. You're hopping and skipping along, heading over to grandma's house for some cookies and shit. Then you decide to crack open her laptop, have a look at some Fortnite videos or whatever the hell children watch these days. I noticed that for the last three hours, your granny has been watching video compilations of dead baby monkeys just sitting there staring at their glassy eyes you gonna stay for them cookies after that <laughs> it doesn't matter to me i suppose now this is not to say that there aren't any men in this group there are quite a few of them in fact they tend to be far more overt with regards to their sadosexual desires yeah, you did read that correctly. Those are a bunch of dudes discussing raping a little monkey with a red hot wire hanger. In a perfect world, I would have believed that this is just a bunch of little edge lords trying to be edgy. Unfortunately, though, this is not a perfect world. I live on a planet that I have to share with people like Levi Simmons. If you don't already know who that is, then do not go looking him up. All right, you will lose a part of your soul that you will never be able to get back. Just know that he is a zoosadist, someone who derives sexual pleasure from the pain and torture of an animal. And unfortunately, this sort of behavior is very rarely ever restricted to simply animals. But anyway, the presence of this filth on our platform, YouTube, 
is something that hurts pretty much everybody on YouTube. Because YouTube always seems to prefer sitting on their ass with their fingers straight up their bunghole doing nothing until something explodes in their face. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this dude probably overreacting or something, right? Yeah, well, I'm gonna highlight a bunch of the cases of abuse that happens to be going on here just so you realize that this isn't like some streamer booping her dog a bit too hard or anything like that. As a result, obviously, there's gonna be some graphic content in here. But don't look away or anything like that. I understand the impulse to look away. Nobody really likes hearing about or seeing this kind of stuff. Animal and child abuse, that's the sort of thing that just ruins your day. Nobody really wants to talk about that. Unfortunately, as a result, that often allows these things to fester and grow. So while I understand the urge to look away, I strongly suggest that you do not. I want you to see exactly what's going on. But don't worry, I'm not just going to toss you into the deep end. I'm going to start a bit on the slower side and move up into the more depraved shit. And uh, I guess the best place to start would be bathing videos because those are ridiculously common and at first glance you might look at one of these videos and think yeah all right nothing seems to be wrong here it's relatively innocuous but watch a few more and you're gonna start to notice some really creepy shit see these videos offer psychopaths a lot of little opportunities to get creative with their sadism while still allowing them to kind of fly under the radar one really common tactic that they use is to mess with the temperature of the water so that's either pretty hot or pretty cold and then dunk the animal in it. Obviously they're gonna freak out, which then provides them with an excuse to uh, discipline the critter. They have some interesting ideas as to how that works. You'll get to see them strangle these critters, hang them upside down and slap them around. Punch them, hit them, dunk them underwater, <laughs> straight up waterboard them in some cases. Or, you know, just dangle them off a rooftop until it shits itself. And yeah, speaking of that, it seems to be an alarming amount of corporate affiliates in this particular community. Uh, by that, I'm referring to people who like shit. A lot. In this case, monkey shit. And videos that highlight the presence of any sort of fecal matter in them tend to accumulate a disturbing amount of views. But let's not dwell on that, at least not yet. Instead, let me show you a few more tricks that I like to use. The old soap in the eyes gimmick, for example, is very popular. Usually they try and pretend that they accidentally rub soap in these animals' eyes. They just happen to do it every single time they try and bathe them. Or in some cases, like on a BBC QTV here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure BBC is just thrilled to have their name associated with this garbage. But yeah, you can see this child here doesn't give a shit about pretenses. They just dump that soap directly into that animal's eyeballs and rub them in. Then they proceed to force it underwater and just hold it there before mocking this little critter as it gasps the air. <laughs> yeah, she certainly ain't gonna grow up to be a serial killer who keeps her mother's severed head in her freezer or anything like that. Because this channel is particularly disgusting, they decided that they weren't just gonna stop at monkeys, they were just gonna toss in some newborn puppies as well. And how about some cats? Or maybe even a... Chicken. Whatever gets the views, I suppose. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's a guy on this channel who keeps his hands glued to these monkeys' behinds whenever they're taking a bath. Seriously, what kind of malfunction does cause this shit? Speaking of that, have a look at this guy. He runs two channels, Teacher Bon Sum and Chara Chin, and he decided that it would be a really good idea to power blast one of these tiny critters in the face. Just full blast. This goes on for around 8 minutes and it ends with the little animal curled up in an entirely disassociative state struggling to breathe.
Now I just want to pause here and point out, look at the size of this animal. Yeah, have a good long look. This is a grown ass hardback man, right? So ask yourself, what kind of person, what kind of man gets off to this shit? Well, let me show you. Here he is with, well, actually, I, I don't know if this is the same monkey or another. He has three of them. And this monkey decided that she didn't want his freaky little fingers coming anywhere near her. And she decided to try and make a break for it. All right, there was a cut. I didn't do that. That was him. Do you notice how her face is suddenly very red and half of it looks kind of squished in? No, fair enough, you could say, well, maybe he dropped his camera trying to catch that monkey, you know, you shouldn't be assuming things, yardfish, if that is even your real name. Well, observe. Yeah, this jackass just hit that animal that's half the size of a coke bottle and about four months old two full power slaps to the face and it doesn't stop there this guy runs two of well one now seen as the previous one has been demonetized apparently but he runs one of the most depraved channels on youtube every single thumbnail that this guy uploads showcases this animal being brutalized in a variety of ways in some cases it doesn't actually happen in the video but he took the photo. He made that photo for that thumbnail. He subjected that animal to this kind of shit. But on top of everything that I just mentioned, this thing openly and brazenly sexually molests these animals. Words cannot truly express the level of disgust that churned up inside me once I saw this for the first time. It was beyond disgusting. His original channel, which has since removed most of its content, aside from the greatest hits, which absolutely had to stay up because this is the sort of shit that his audience gets rock hot. Actually, wait, no. I just remembered most of them are actually women. Ah, uh, this is the kind of shit that just causes his audience to soak their ancient ass granny panties. Scat videos and snuff. Do you see what I mean about the corporophilia? 124,000 views on that shit. Oh, and that video with the little rest in peace tag. Yeah, that chronicles the final moments of this animal's life. It's in a truly ragged and horrible condition. Wheezing and gasping for air before it finally dies and kicks off to that monkey sanctuary in the sky. Meanwhile, we have people like Grant Wiley in the comments here popping his cork off to the exact moment it finally snuffs it. Very handily providing a timestamp for the perverts like him who just... So you can just jump right to those final moments. Oh, and this ain't some kind of one-off video or anything like that. Videos of these dead animals being fondled and manhandled are absurdly common. There are entire channels that are specifically dedicated to documenting and chronicling the life and death of these animals with the focus being primarily on their slow degradation and eventual drawn-out death with just an extended focus on their face as they finally kick it. Other channels, however, sometimes prefer them to be already dead, and their videos are little more than compilations of their lifeless rotting corpses. <laughs> like, dude, what is it with zoo sadists and necrophilia? I, it, every time you hear or see a zoo sadist, they're always into some necro shit. Why? Okay, actually, upon five seconds of consideration, I realized that's a stupid question. Degeneracy is just simply boundless on the internet. I just didn't think it would be so brazenly displayed on YouTube. Anyway, back to the guy I was originally talking about. Yeah, most of his videos feature thumbnails like this, the animals being overtly abused, or their legs spread open, pointed towards the camera. <sighs> Jesus Christ, dude, this shit making me sick. I'm gonna go eat and come back.
Yeah, all right, so that lunch break was actually closer to three days. But in that time, I've noticed that this parasite, this little bottom feeder, actually has a couple more channels, such as Monkey Savet HD and the appropriately titled Beauty Channel. You might be wondering what's up with that unusual name. Well, see, the thing is, a lot of these channels, after they eventually get reported enough times, YouTube might occasionally actually demonetize their channel or strike them down, at which point they simply acquire a new channel as in they buy one, as the trade of monetized YouTube channels is uh, apparently a thing in Cambodia. Which is why if you sort some of these channels from oldest to newest, you'll notice that the older videos tend to be of something completely unrelated. But here's the thing though. These channels are run by the same group of individuals. There is a YouTuber called Onblast who has been working to uncover these little rats and he's actually done a pretty damn good job. I strongly suggest you head over to his channel and have a look at some of his videos that really helps shed light on how this particular business is run in Cambodia. As well as give yourself a good look at the faces of the little men and women that are behind this particular ring. A single individual usually owns between three to four to five channels at a time as well as multiple monkeys that they feature in these different channels. But anyway, back to the guy I was initially talking about. Yeah, these new channels of his are even more overtly disgusting than the older ones. The very open and shot of some of these videos feature him molesting these animals brazenly and openly. Obviously, I'm going to be censoring all of that shit here. Nobody in their right mind deserves to see this shit. But with regards to this channel and this man, yeah, this is, this is just one of many that sexually abuse these animals. But I'll get to them a bit later. Instead, I want to continue moving along talking about some of the other types of tricks that these monkey abuse channel uses. You'll also notice that there are a lot of videos that specialize in feeding time. Many of these appear to be pretty straightforward, nothing wrong going on there. But keep digging and you're going to start seeing some problems popping up. For one, it's pretty obvious that many of these animals are extremely malnourished. And the only time they're actually being fed is when that camera happens to be rolling. And one thing these YouTubers really like to do is after these animals have been starved for a period of time, they then proceed to overfeed them, which often results in them throwing up. Another way to achieve this particular outcome is to feed these animals spoiled milk or curdled milk, which usually results in projectile vomit. Both of these things serve to delight this community. So I've noticed that there are quite a few of them that are incredibly upset that these animals are being fed at all. This is some of the Tamer stuff. Instead, this is a community that desires suffering. They desire misery, not just pain inflicted on a physical level, but they want to see these creatures be tormented psychologically. So you'll see these YouTubers doing things like taunting these animals with the uh, milk just out of reach. Occasionally dipping the bottle a little bit closer so they can have just a tiny little sip as the little animal is left to tumble around whimpering and crying. Which, as I mentioned, is the whole goal. They want to see them in distress. So far, the worst I've seen with regards to this particular form of torment goes to the deflated pus sack that happens to run the channels Monkey Alex, Monkey Wiki, Monkey Jack. Dude has a bunch of them. And his whole shtick is getting his hands on a young monkey, usually a newborn, and in some cases, what appears to be a premature little monkey that he then slowly starves over a period of about two to three weeks. He'll usually have another monkey in frame for these videos. He will feed that one, but ignore the other. Just look at the size of this critter. Seriously, this creature is beyond helpless and vulnerable. And this is its very first experience in this world. It's starved over a period of around a month, at which point its body breaks down. It becomes just a mass of bone and skin. There is no muscle tissue on this creature. They become critically weak to the point that they can't even move, they can't even lift their head, and eventually they die. Though the YouTuber in question usually claims that they were um, taken away by somebody who could give them the proper care in a hospital somewhere. <laughs> yeah, okay, dude. This guy is also attempting to repeat this trick with his newest batch of monkeys, Monkey Wiki and Monkey Nick, and... Well, it's the exact same story. He's slowly starving them until they die and they eventually disappear off the channel. So I'll ask you again, what kind of people do you think gets off on this shit? Keep thinking about that as we move on. You can't talk about animal abuse on YouTube without talking about the fake ass rescue videos. These videos used to be pretty popular, usually featuring cats and dogs. And again, in Southeast Asian countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. 
of uh, tireless YouTubers worked to expose this kind of stuff and eventually got them shut down and there are quite a few of them that are no longer functional. But these monkey channels are here to fill that void as they've seemingly gone unnoticed by YouTube. And those original types of rescue videos were pretty bad and pretty shitty, but these are even more pathetic. Any attempt at some sort of logical consistency is kinda just tossed out the window. You will see the same guy rescuing the same monkey multiple times from a variety of different sources, say a construction site, a river, a well, a, uh, hole in the ground like the one that this animal found itself in I can't tell if these YouTubers were dropped on the head or they assumed that their audience were. I'd actually be both because the like dislike ratings on some of these videos are pretty telling. These type of rescue vids also tend to occur in trends at the point where I first stumbled upon this community, the popular thing happened to be rain videos. Where some poor one week old monkey somehow managed to get stuck in a rainstorm somehow and our brave and selfless hero sits in a bush somewhere filming before deciding to spring into action 8 minutes later heading over to this animal is like oh oh no poor boo boo poor boo boo how you get lost how you get in rain oh no I have no idea how this could happen. Right right sure you don't. Oh, and in case you just don't happen to have a rainstorm handy, you could just use a power hose instead. As you might notice in some of these videos that the rain appears to only be falling in a single circular area. Clever. But this does highlight a certain something that becomes important when looking at these videos and the community that appreciates them. And that's helplessness and vulnerability. These animals are placed into situations that highlight their helplessness and their struggles are then filmed as they cry out for assist that struggle along with the panic and hopelessness that kind of comes with it that's the appeal there are entire youtube channels dedicated to showcasing these animals being stuck or in precarious situations where they simply can't do anything but struggle and cry out but it gets even creepier than that there are many many videos where nothing occurs but one of these animals simply sits in a room curls up whimpering and crying. Videos can go on for 10 minutes at a time and appear to serve no purpose but to showcase the broken state of these animals. Because here's the thing, these critters are primates, they're not like dogs or cats or anything like that. Primates require a significant amount of attention from the moment that they're born from their parents. Primates give birth a single Infant. These animals then remain with their mothers for around a period of 9 to 14 months. Following that, they will then remain with their immediate kin, talking their mothers as well as their aunts and siblings until death or they leave the group. Separating any higher primates from its mother at birth is an incredibly traumatic experience. For this reason, whenever these animals are used in sociological or psychological studies, they're never separated from their mothers until that 9 to 14 month period has passed. If they are, they inevitably develop psychological issues that make them useless to the study as it requires them to be in a healthy and neutral state. So my point is, it is incredibly easy to inflict tremendous psychological trauma on these animals at this point in their lives. But more importantly, these animals do not respond to that trauma like a dog or a cat would. Dogs don't curl up in the fetal position whimpering like a child would. They don't hold their heads in their hands rocking back and forth in their heels broken by months of torment. These animals are in the possession of some of the most complex set of facial muscles on planet Earth. Their misery gets etched into their face, you don't have to guess. And here's the thing about monkeys. They experience pain very, very acutely in a manner very similar to how human beings do. I don't want you to just believe me because I said that. I am going to provide you with multiple studies that will show you exactly how badly these animals experience pain. Right down to the very specific facial expressions that they produce in response to that pain. It also provides one very important detail for understanding this whole scenario. Macaques being social animals as they grow older they will begin to mask their pain, as showing that pain in a social environment can be pretty dangerous for them. So when an adult macaque believes that it's being observed, it will try to conceal any signs of pain or injury. And once they think they're alone again, they'll go back to showing those symptoms. This is important for a specific reason. You can't really torture adult monkeys, they aren't going to give you the pleasure and satisfaction. They're basically going to tell you to piss off and sit there gritting their teeth until they eventually die. That's why it has to be baby monkeys. 
babies, these infants, they don't conceal their pain. They can't. They aren't aware how. And as a result, like all infant primates, their response to trauma and pain is visceral. It's immediate. Notice how these videos all tend to focus on these little animals crying out in pain, clinging to themselves and sucking their thumbs, which is in itself a self-soothing response to trauma. Something that this particular audience hates, you'll often see them in the comments insisting that they do not allow these animals to cling to anything, do not allow them to suck their thumbs. And some of the more creative piss mops will tell them to sure, allow them to hug for a bit, then split them apart and separate them by some bars. Make sure that they can see each other, but not hug. Make sure that they can suffer. And the YouTubers filming will often acquiesce to these demands, usually banding these little animals' hands so they can't actually suck their fingers. Claiming that they'll get an infection if they keep doing it. If they actually gave a shit, they'd address the problem causing this particular behavior, which is stress. A lot of work and effort needs to be put in to meet the social and psychological needs of these animals, which these people are clearly incapable of. It is possible to raise a healthy primate in captivity, but it's very difficult and requires a lot of effort, something that these people aren't interested in. Instead, spending their time placing these animals deliberately into highly stressful situations, like leaving them stranded in a lake. Or another particular favorite happens to be leaving them stranded on an ant's nest. With the younger, the better, as any monkey older than a couple of weeks will simply pull itself out of the situation, but the newborns usually won't. They will instead tend to cling to whatever piece of comfort they can find nearby, as that is their primary response to trauma. But in the first few weeks of an infant's life, their primary and overwhelming instinct beyond anything else is to cling to their mother because it's at that point in their life where they are most vulnerable and absolutely requires their mother's care and protection to survive. The people that tend to upload these videos are aware of that. They will usually dump a small cloth or something that's soft or warm near these animals. So they cling to it as opposed to try and get away. But again, my point is these videos all serve to highlight the vulnerability and helplessness of these animals. That is a crucial part of the allure. Now let me show you something. See, this little monkey is curled up in a well down there making little cooing sounds, which is what they do when they call for their mother or any kin that comes by. And eventually a friend shows up and gets him out of the well, gives him a little reassuring pat. This annoys the assholes filming, so this is what they decide to do. Yeah, what purpose did that serve exactly? Okay, look, I had to edit this little bit in before I published this video because YouTube actually decided to finally take their finger out their rectum for once and ban the channel I was going to talk about right now. It only took them three years, but I'm still going to show this video right now because it's important. Serving as a catalyst for a particularly disgusting trend that shows up amongst this community. This was the video that they would show you when you head to their main page. Yeah, did you notice that little bit at the end there, where the animal is trapped in a crab cage or something, and actually manages to squeeze his way out? Yeah, all of a sudden there's a cut, and then he's back in, and there's a piece of twig blocking his way out. I wonder how that happened. Must have been some kind of Cambodian sorcery, right? Yeah, the shit stains running this channel discovered that they hit gold with this form of entertainment, and uploaded multiple videos featuring the exact same thing. This was then followed by multiple other channels deciding to follow that particular trend in search of that sweet YouTube money. With the most overtly disgusting being Aldo Monkeys, a channel that is constantly being reported and yet somehow manages to remain up despite explicitly violating the YouTube Terms of Service. Every channel that I've mentioned so far is in violation of YouTube Terms of Service, but this one is particularly egregious. This was their version of a monkey versus dog video. It's a bit graphic, but like I mentioned before, don't look away. 
see what these animals have to deal with on a daily basis. Yeah, that monkey did in fact just throw up as a response to that ordeal. And that just goes on and on and on for minutes on end. And there are multiple videos like this. Now, in case you want to be pedantic and claim that, oh no, dude, they probably had some automated camera or something there. They probably headed out to market to buy their grandmother some cucumbers or something. And this happened in their absence and then they decided to upload it onto YouTube because why not? <laughs> Yeah, so much for that idea. But their favorite pastime happens to be making these little animals fight each other. Specifically, pitting the oldest and most aggressive against the youngest and most vulnerable. They began with the monkey called Aldo before introducing a monkey called Claire, who would then be attacked by Aldo as they simply sat there and filmed. Now anybody with half a brain understands that when you're introducing two animals to each other, you need to be careful regardless of if they're the same species or not. You don't introduce your guinea pig to your Rottweiler and then go take a shower and hope that things are well when you come back. You don't introduce a kitten to a tomcat without extreme caution as they have a tendency of killing unrelated kittens. This ain't rocket science. But this is obviously the point. And this behavior isn't particularly difficult to achieve. Monkeys, like I mentioned before, are highly social creatures and also require a considerable amount of attention from their mother. They will never be in a situation like this in the wild thanks to the presence of kin groups which will intercede into any such conflict even when it's between higher and lower ranked monkeys. In order to achieve this kind of scenario all they have to do is simply feed the younger one, lavish it with some attention and ignore the older one. That lack of attention is going to promote an antagonistic relationship and you're going to get something like this. If you're an unhinged psychopath you could also try doing this on your own kids. Just make sure you have a lot of money to pay for the decades of therapy that they're going to need afterwards. But eventually they add a third monkey to the mix of female. Once these two get too old and well they repeat the trick. They gang up on this little one constantly. Now I want to point out that amongst the community of freaks that watch this kind of stuff. There are a lot of them who apparently believe that there's some kind of Dr. Doolittles. But uh, much closer to a smooth-brained Hannibal Lecter that attempt to try and drop some knowledge on the ignorant commentators who are outraged by this sort of thing. Telling them that the younger one is being noisy and that's why the older one is attacking it. Blah blah blah, this is how their tribe would be, they would tear them apart as said. But like I mentioned before, the presence of kin groups tends to moderate this kind of behavior. And more importantly, anybody with some goddamn eyes would notice that the animal in question, Ava, is usually sitting quietly playing by herself or facing towards a wall. Again, not a sign of trauma. And only reacts when the other one comes near to it, at which point it just freaks out and attempts to run away. Then there's a cut. And it's suddenly back with the other animal. This is their shtick. They've uploaded videos like these for years now. The YouTube guidelines clearly state that any video where animals are either coerced or encouraged to fight each other is a violation of their terms of service. And yet this channel remains up. Is there somebody at YouTube secretly twisting their nipples to this shit? Is that why this is still up? Because I'm really not seeing how this channel has managed to avoid notice for 3 years. But time is short so let's move on to some of the grimier stuff as well. Snuff. There are animal snuff channels on YouTube. This isn't simply limited to monkeys. But the first one I found did happen to be monkey snuff. Some dude snared a monkey somewhere. A stump tail macaque which by the way is protected by law in pretty much every country that is native to. And shanks it before just standing there and watch the life slowly bleed out of it for a good 5 minutes or so. 
like a sane, well-adjusted, healthy human individual. I'm obviously not gonna show that shit. That video is no longer up. I'm not sure if it was taken down by YouTube or it was privated. So instead, this guy decided to start just simply uploading videos from other sources that simply focus on their dying gasps. Yeah, let me show you something. Yeah, so those were the death throws of a baby monkey. Now let me ask you, are your hands currently in your pants? If you answered no, then congratulations, there is some hope for you yet. If you answered yes, then, well, of course you answered yes. You, you know what you are, degenerate. But there are a lot of these videos on YouTube. Videos that simply dare to highlight these animals in a completely broken and desperate state. Beaten down and with the light gone from their eyes. But before I get to that, I want to draw your attention to this particular YouTube channel here. The human-shaped herpes stains that tend to watch and enjoy these sort of videos will often claim that they love all animals, they just hate monkeys. I've actually noticed that some people appear to believe them for some reason. Zoo sadists constantly claim to love animals, as do zoo files. Go read the zoo sadism leaks of 2018 if you don't believe me, but I really hope you have a strong stomach if you do that because it is one of the most disgusting pieces of discourse ever exchanged between human beings. People lie. People delude themselves constantly. Look at their actions instead, which is why I want to point to this channel over here. It's a Japanese channel. Goes by the name of Mast Extermination Tezu. It's run by a fat Japanese man who dresses up like a 1960s superhero and beats animals to death with a baseball bat. I know how that sounds, but I, I didn't make that up. That is what this guy does. Now, he has a gun, a shotgun, which he does use from time to time, when he's feeling merciful, I suppose, but usually he prefers to uh, kick and stomp on the animals that he's captured before eventually smashing their skull open with a baseball bat. In this particular video, which I'm not going to show, a small fawn has its leg trapped in one of his snares. He extends the leg, viciously kicks it, causing it to snap like a toothpick and a bone to poke right through that skin. He then delivers a crushing blow to the skull, but it's not dead. He stabs it once and simply leaves it there to bleed out as he stands filming it for... Well, I don't know how long he's standing there, but it'll take a while for it to bleed out. That's kind of how most of his videos go. Act 1 consists of him brutalizing the animal in some way and eventually killing it. And Acts 2 and 3 simply, well, the camera just hangs there savoring the corpse. He headshots a monkey in one video and pretty much the entirety of its running time is just that monkey's corpse with its brain leaking out. Watching this loser trying to curb stomp a juvenile day is one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen in my life, especially since he looked like he was about to have a heart attack from the sheer exertion of the activity. But of course, his most popular video by far happens to be him beating a juvenile monkey to death with his baseball bat. Animal looks to be a little over a year and possibly a few months old. He snares it smashes its head in a few times with a baseball bat then stabs it in the lung as opposed to the heart to really prolong its suffering then drags it out of the bush that it happens to be in so that his audience can get a good look at its last final moments again let me show you what gets these people rock hard But according to this mobile socket trans fat, what he's doing is apparently legal in that particular region of Japan. He's culling these animals. Yeah, sure, okay, he's just choosing to do it in the most sadistic way possible because as I mentioned, he has a gun. But, I mean, you know, like that guy from that movie said, guns, they're too quick. But on top of that, here's the thing though. A dude and a chick could go to Boontown and record that and it's all perfectly fine and legal. They just can't upload it onto YouTube as it violates their terms of service. It doesn't really matter what the laws of your country says. You upload your video onto this platform, there are certain rules that you're meant to abide by. Or at least that's what it technically is supposed to be. YouTube seems to be highly inconsistent with regards to its priorities. You say a little naughty word in one of your videos and you will get destroyed by them. But bludgeon a snared wild animal to death that is completely helpless. 
That's a okay. Supposedly, this channel is uh, not monetized according to the individual who uploads these videos, but uh, that doesn't stop him from having a little ad out there asking people to join his little magical adventure club and donate to help him with this most dire of work. But again, just want to mention helplessness, vulnerability, the inability to defend itself. All right, but look, in all fairness, YouTube does occasionally take down some of these videos, and that's where the fans come in. The community of sadistic soccer moms and monkey molesting men that make up this community of freaks that enjoy this type of content, they consume this shit at a truly abnormal rate. These videos are being dumped out on the internet, multiple videos per day. There are hours of this content being uploaded every day onto YouTube and they're always there, sitting in that front seat, offering their constructive feedback. Within hours of that video actually getting dropped, you will begin to recognize familiar names and faces. People who absolutely need that shot of monkey torture first thing in the morning. Honestly, with the frequency that some of these freaks post, I find myself wondering when they have time to do anything. But anyway, as a result, they've accumulated quite a collection that they are more than happy to share with other like-minded individuals. So they go set up their own little channels where they provide the juiciest choices of cuts to a ravenous and appreciative audience. They get to cut out all of that filler and appropriately tune their videos for each particular niche that exists within this freak show. You're the type of person that gets a kick out of seeing a little helpless animal cry out and scream for its mother, knowing full well that that mother ain't ever gonna show up. You like those displays of helplessness and vulnerability seeing fear and panic creep into their face as they gradually lose control and eventually shit themselves. Well, lucky you. Those are among the most popular of these types of compilations. You're gonna find a lot of them. Oh, hey, maybe you like watching little baby monkeys get torn apart by dogs. If that's the case, then again, YouTube has your back. Such compilations are ready and waiting for you. Maybe you have an affinity for monkey shit or monkey piss, perhaps both. Then we have channels like Majestic, which appears to specialize in such content. Truly, this must be a haven for you people. Or maybe you're the sort that just finds considerable delight in watching something grow from a bright-eyed, innocent little creature, curious and inquisitive, only to have that light beaten out of them daily as they grow more and more depressed, more stressed, malnourished and miserable until they eventually curl up into a little ball and die. With a close up on their face so you can really watch the life drain out of their eyes. YouTube has you covered. Or perhaps you're one of those types of people that just can't get excited unless they're already dead. Again, YouTube provides almost half an hour of decomposing infant monkeys just for the necrophiles out there. This has to be your jackpot, right? And look, if you have some other explanation as to why anybody in their right mind would spend half an hour staring at the decomposing corpses of infant monkeys, you let me know, all right? All of this stuff happens to be freely available on YouTube, compiled into gigantic playlists that's favorited and distributed by these freaks. But that's just the tip of this particular community. They deserve a video dedicated solely to them. As these community-run channels, as you can call them, these places serve as a sort of safe space, a little haven for these rats where they can cling to each other like a cluster of pubic lice. They don't really have to try and keep up that facade of being normal, of being ordinary. They don't have to bother themselves about giving excuses to the interloping Karens trying to shut their shit down. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, actually, I forgot to mention this. You know how puffer fish inflate themselves to look more threatening to their enemies? Yeah, well, the defense mechanism of these particular inbred freaks happens to be having an aneurysm and repeatedly shrieking Karen at the top of their lungs. This is what they label pretty much anyone who finds their behavior to be particularly objectionable or find that their comments are reminiscent of something a goat humping serial killer might say. These fine men and women kinda just completely lose their shit and insist that the accuser happens to be a member of the dreaded menopause mafia, a group of dried up menopausal carcasses that have dedicated their lives to ruining the fun of this upstanding community. As I mentioned before, most of these people are middle-aged women and above. It is some truly surreal shit. Like I woke up in a Twilight Zone episode where a portion of the world's Karens were infected by some horrifying virus that has them perceiving everyone else as the Karen and they're the manager. But anyway, in these most sacred of places, the comment sections for these channels, these clowns can be found swapping life stories, expressing their desire to see these animals tortured and mutilated. 
before switching gears to talk about what a terrible, awful day they've been having and they're so glad that they have friends like these to listen to them. I even found these two weirdos trying to hook up under some baby monkey torture porn. I've been getting my friends to send me videos of these rats in dead situations. I truly can't stand these ugly rats, especially the babies and the young ones. I see you've watched all the videos I've been watching. I've been hooked lately and the younger the uglier they are. It's so satisfying watching them being tortured and the screams just make you want to hurt them even more. Keep up the good work and support. You're nothing less than a queen. Mm. I seriously want to pay big money to go to one of these countries and meet a few of these things. Uh, I'd easily go with you for the same reason. The screaming gets to me too. I love it and hate it. I love that you're into it as well. I truly think these parasites are nothing but walking maggot meat. In about 34 years, when I'm old enough to get my 401k, I swear to God I'm vacationing to one of these places just to fulfill the dream. And I know the screams get in your head and just drive you insane in ways it's hard to describe. I thought I was the only one it made feel like that. You've literally nailed the exact way I feel. I was trying to find words to describe what you so beautifully said, my friend, and I couldn't. It's so truly satisfying to watch them scream for an actual reason instead of simply at nothing. I can't stand people that own them and love them as pets. Completely useless. Lol, my god, you're the coolest girl I've met already. Have you watched the Tree Rat Family videos on here yet? I still have to stay out of all the videos I've watched. So far I've yet to find one that hurts them to the point of pure bliss. They kind of leave me feeling incomplete. With so much hatred left I can't explain it. And mind you, I'm a huge animal lover. I've even fed squirrels out of my hands. And I would never hurt an animal. But there's something about these things that don't make me feel any compassion towards them. Like they're just empty shells that need to be cracked open. Yes, oh hell yes, I found a great one of a monkey getting torn apart. It's on here, click link. Oh vampire kitten, why couldn't I have met you so many years ago? Oh, Stephen, I feel the same way. Oh, vampire kitten. Oh, Stephen. YouTube is such a wholesome place. But all right, look. Uh, I'm actually going to have to alter this video quite significantly at this point originally i meant to go into a bit more detail regarding this community and the videos that are posted on these sort of community channels but um yeah i ended up coming into some new information that sort of makes a lot of that just completely obsolete i will provide a sort of summary before moving into honestly not really what i expected but I suppose I really shouldn't be surprised. Now, more than a few of these community-run channels out there have their videos as unlisted. If you simply stumble upon them by happenstance, you're just gonna see what appears to be a dead page. Only way you're gonna get access to their videos is if someone shares the link with you or you find it in a playlist somewhere on the internet. This is conspicuous in and of itself. However, there are channels out there that feature content premium content, high quality monkey torture porn that you can't really see just like that. You're gonna have to pay a membership fee if you wanna get to the good stuff. With the most prominent being the channel run by the individual that's often identified as Ratmaster. This walking urinary tract infection hails from Indonesia somewhere, not exactly sure where. And he's sort of like this community's personal little Jeffrey Epstein. He has access to his own set of monkeys, including one that is sort of like a fan favorite amongst these individuals, a monkey called Monkey G, particularly famous for cradling her head in her arms and rocking back and forth. For a nominal fee, you too could have access to his entire album of monkey torture porn, which includes videos of him slapping these creatures around, strangling them, and dumping them in a bucket full of ice water. You know, the standard shit most boomers enjoy. Oh, and they pay. <laughs> Make no mistake, they pay. 
these people are desperate for this kind of shit. Also on YouTube, you can find individuals attempting to sell monkeys. These channels appear to be primarily located in Vietnam. Offering up a fresh batch of new YouTube stars. Now, this community has a lot of idiots. With their full name and photographs of themselves in full view and full display to pretty much everyone. You're also going to find a bunch of these clowns actually trying to buy one of these monkeys. Had I stumbled upon this about two months ago, I would have assumed it was a joke. It was just people clowning, you know. But after seeing the sheer lengths that some of these people will go to to find fresh monkey content, yeah, I am no longer laboring under that delusion. These idiots are actually trying to buy a monkey and have it shipped to the US from Vietnam. These are the people who drown in the shower because they just can't stop looking up with their mouths open. Oh, and also, is there a reason why YouTube allows this? It seems like it's... A bit questionable. Are we gonna see people using YouTube to start selling their toddlers in a couple weeks? I'm just wondering, you know. Anyway, you can also often find members of these communities desperately making requests in the comment sections looking for specific videos, that good vintage shit. Usually they're referring to the Squishy Monkey video or the Aldo Crush video. Those names might have set off alarm bells in some people's heads and they probably should have. These videos are not things that I can show, I'll explain after. I'll just show you a screen cap. Squishy Monkey refers to this video, starring this little itty bitty creature. He's clinging to this guy's hand for the first couple seconds, but eventually dude grabs him and begins crushing his face. He does this repeatedly over the course of several minutes as this animal gurgles and begins vomiting. The animal suffers severe facial deformities as a result and eventually dies. The second video, the Aldo Crush video, features a monkey, an infant monkey, pinned under a heavy wooden chair. Camera then zooms into his face so we can't actually see someone exerting pressure on the other end of the chair, which then begins crushing his abdomen. This animal cries out, struggles, screams, stares directly at the cameraman reaching out to him for assistance before it begins to vomit. It's a slow oozing trickle at first but eventually escalates into a full on gush, a combination of liquid and chunks. Eventually this animal gets weaker and weaker, continues to stare at the cameraman, reaches out for assistance and eventually the video simply cuts off. I have no idea if this animal survived or not. The channel Aldo Monkey still has a monkey called Aldo but these channels often use multiple monkeys, which they rotate through whenever one of them happens to get particularly badly injured or in some cases just flat out dies. So it's difficult to tell. Unlike most of the videos out there that I've mentioned before that feature these animals being abused in some manner, shape or form, these two videos get nuked off the internet pretty much almost the instant they show up on YouTube. Not just the burner account that uploaded it, but the original channel that linked to that burner account. So why does YouTube take these two videos so seriously as opposed to the others? Well, simple. It's because these videos aren't simply just a violation of YouTube's terms of service. It's also a violation of US federal law. It's been about a year and a couple of months since that law has been signed in. But it explicitly criminalizes any form of media that shows an animal being crushed, drowned, burned, which then results in notable injury or death for that animal. Creation, possession or distribution of this kind of content will land your ass seven years in jail. The boomers and occasional zoomers that watch this kind of shit aren't exactly the most tech savvy individuals out there and are apparently unaware that every time you upload a file onto Google servers it has to pass through a hashing checkpoint which compares its, let's call it a digital signature, against other digital signatures specifically of known illegal content. If there is a match, you get pinged and then Google, with that knowledge, they're obligated to then forward your personal information to the authorities. That's exactly how former YouTuber Cadence Pinder got nabbed. So yeah, I'd say there's at least a decent chance that some of these bumbling idiots actually have a file on them already. Alright, look, this video needed a couple more weeks in the oven. There are a lot more things that I needed to talk about, but um... The information that I came across a couple of days ago, it was very recently released, kind of changed a lot of things. And as a result, I really believe that I need to get this video out as quickly as possible in the hopes that some of you all there might be able to assist in this particular scenario. I do want to provide you with fair warning though. 
What I'm about to discuss now is significantly more disturbing and disgusting than anything I touched on before, but I do not want you to run away because this is probably the most important part. So while I was sifting through this absolute cesspool of a community, I noticed many individuals requesting special custom made videos, requesting membership to a certain group that had access to special videos premium stuff you know also notice some of these people offering membership all you needed to do was to send them a little bit of an email and they'd hook you up now i thought that this was a scam i thought it was a honeypot or something right because the clowns that make up this community they aren't exactly what we'd call careful with their personal information i figured somebody noticed this and figured that they were just gonna exploit them maybe blackmail them get some cash out of them one way or another. So I kind of ignored it. Uh, that was clearly a mistake. These diseased, subhuman sacks of shit, these absolute degenerates, did in fact create for themselves a little telegram group wherein these individuals, all US and UK citizens, made contact with an individual from Jakarta in Indonesia who would supply them with what they refer to as stress monkeys. You see, this individual will procure these animals and then for a nominal fee, you can adopt one of these animals. Once you've adopted them, you can then provide these people with a specific set of instructions as to what you want done to your particular baby monkey. Because, yeah, they're baby monkeys, specifically baby monkeys. Now, I would see these freaks when confronted with their behavior, claiming that, you know, they're just watching some videos, they would never actually do this to one of these disgusting little animals, even though they hate them. Uh, that's a gigantic load of bullshit, because once they found themselves in a position to actually indulge their whims, they just went overboard. I'll describe some of the videos that were leaked. A group of infant monkeys, we're talking a couple weeks old here at most, with tied spread eagle to a set of boards. Because of course, what did you expect from these people? I'll show a very heavily censored version of this video right now. These are normal people, right? Sane, healthy, well-adjusted people with kids paying for this shit. Or make no mistake, a lot of these people have kids. A lot of them have access to animals. One of these people, they go by the name of funny horses, animals, donkeys, or some shit like that. They're working or living on a farm with access to children and a wide variety of animals. They're also one of the most prolific commentators in this community. What do you think that they get up to? Anyway, moving on. These animals have also had their fingers, ears, and arms chopped off by request. Can, can. So. In one video, one of these babies had their arms chopped off, beaten, then bludgeoned with the severed arm before having their throat slit. One infant monkey was strapped down to a table, then pins inserted through his eyelids, lips, nose, and ears. Another infant was hung by its scrotum and genitals and repeatedly submerged into ice-cold water. A juvenile monkey had its arms tied behind its back. They were repeatedly kicked in the face and chest and then forced underwater. Other baby monkeys had various body parts dabbed in lighter fluid and then set ablaze. One juvenile monkey had its fur dyed pink. It was then hung by the neck from an iron chain and then beaten as it was strangled. These are just some of the things that I saw. This information was uncovered by a group of animal rights advocates, specifically Lady Freethinker and Action for Primates. Last year, these NGOs conducted an investigation into YouTube and created a detailed report regarding the proliferation of animal abuse content onto YouTube as well as YouTube's complicity in that content. This was a year ago. YouTube has known about this kind of stuff at the very least for a year now. They have done jack 
shit. The videos that they've removed are a fraction compared to what remains. In February of this year, The Sun ran an article detailing the prevalence of monkey torture videos on YouTube. They said, yeah, we, we take care of these problems, no problem, we take care of it. They removed one channel. They were back on YouTube like a month later. On July 30th, 2021, National Geographic released a incredibly detailed, comprehensive article, again detailing YouTube's complicity in animal abuse. The prevalence of it on their platform and the fact that these channels happen to be monetized. YouTube again said that they were going to do something about it. Yeah, that was like a week ago. Look at where we're at. This community of filth is comprised of people who use YouTube as a safe space. They've distributed and created videos on this platform for years now. And YouTube sat there and did nothing. It grew and grew until we're here at this point. Where it's become something... I don't even know what to call this exactly. I didn't expect this to be the end result when I started this project, but uh, I suppose I really shouldn't be surprised. Now, US law enforcement is involved. The foreign motion branch of this particular group has been shut down. Its members have had their info sent to law enforcement. And initially, while creating this video, I intended to reveal the identities of some of the individuals who were most active in this community but now that the feds involved, I'm just going to send their info straight to them. I don't want to risk screwing up any investigation that's ongoing. Oh, and hey, if you happen to know of anyone who happens to be part of this particular community, if you recognize any of these more prolific or sadistic commentators, then by all means, please forward their information to law enforcement. Don't blast their info here in these comments or on social media or something like that. Send it to the people who can actually manage to stick their ass in jail for seven years. All right, and I'm also not going to tell you to head to these channels, these various monkey torture channels that I showed off here, and tell you to report their content because that doesn't do jack shit. They'll just buy a new channel and be back up in a week. So I suppose buying a new channel does cost money and does inconvenience them at least a little bit but really and truly this is a problem that requires some active intervention on youtube's path these channels are primarily motivated by cash that financial incentive needs to be excised in some way and that is something that requires some actual effort on youtube's part for so long they've simply relied on us to do their job for them that's not going to cut it in the long run. That's just not sustainable. They're actually going to have to allocate resources into tuning their algorithm to prevent this sort of shit from happening. I want YouTube to take preemptive action for once in their existence and deal with a problem before it becomes catastrophic before mainstream media gets involved and we have another adpocalypse on our hands. Something that hurts everyone on this platform who's been playing by the rules. They're always the ones to suffer from situations like these. Situations brought about because YouTube couldn't be bothered to actually lift a finger and do something. They allowed pedophiles to flourish on their platform for years, only moving to take action once corporations got involved and advertisers started pulling their funding. I don't want it to get to that again. I want YouTube to put some active effort into regulating its own website and its own rules. And I want these sick pieces of shit to burn. I want them to be dragged out into the light like the cockroaches that they are and have everyone see their faces. These psychopaths deserve no protection and with any luck they'll get the full seven years for their crimes. But that's probably just wishful thinking. So anyway, share the information in this video. Share the video if you can. It's a pretty long video. I understand if not everybody wants to watch it. But the information contained within is most important. Let people know. Let people make us stink. Then get up in YouTube's face and force them to inhale. Before the shit gets any worse. Oh, and one last thing. I am but a scrub. There are many people out there with investigative skills that far exceed my own who can really make a difference in this kind of situation. Uh, there's a channel called On Blast that I mentioned earlier. This person has done a really good job digging into the identities of the people that run these channels. I would strongly suggest you pay his channel a visit and uh, have a look at the videos that he's got posted there. I'm out for now. Gonna post the second video someday soon.